endoscopy with biopsy is a test that it's important to recognize it's only been around since the 60s, and we haven't really had the opportunity to look at the in inside of the intestinal tract uh, until that time. Uh, before that, there are rigid endo endo endoscopes, and now we have flexible endoscopes that you can look through the mouth, esophagus, stomach, and small intestine, and then also through the colon. The endoscopes themselves <clears throat> are designed to uh, look, so you get a visual appearance of the uh, lining as well as procure biopsies. Um, and the third thing that's important about endoscopies is you can also perform therapeutics. So if you have an area that is uh, narrowed or have a stricture, you can dilate it. So there's really three reasons that we would do something like this. You need to do an endoscopy to obtain the diagnosis, to make the diagnosis of eosinophilic GI diseases. Um, you need to get a piece of tissue so you can look at them under the, bio, uh, under the microscope and that allows us to define what kind of inflammation might be there. If you think about um, endoscopies, I guess there's a couple different ways that <clears throat> we, uh, we consider this. It's a test that is done, uh, a physician needs to order it. After the order is placed, um, then uh, a procedure is scheduled. And after the procedure is scheduled, the patient will come to the hospital, typically to an endoscopy unit, either in a hospital or a freestanding uh, uh, unit, and they would be checked in. The nurse uh, would meet with them to let them uh, know about what was going to happen during the procedure. Uh, the physician would come to discuss the procedure with them, again, the reasons that this is being done, as well as uh, the complications that it can occur and what to expect during and afterwards. After the uh, consent is obtained for the procedure, the patient goes back to the endoscopy suite where they receive anesthesia. During that time, they may get an IV. Um, typically, an IV will be placed, which can be the one part of the procedure that may be painful. Uh, and uh, often, you'll get some topical anesthesia, so that might not even be painful. But an IV may be placed, and um, then anesthesia is provided either through the vein or inhaled. And um, some patients may undergo general anesthesia for the procedure, whereas others may just get intravenous medications. After the procedure, uh, those parts of things are done. Uh, the patient has the procedure itself where the endoscope is advanced into the mouth, into the esophagus, stomach, and small intestine, or if it's a colonoscopy, into the colon, and uh, the pieces of tissue are obtained at that time. One thing that's important to remember is that during the time a patient is under anesthesia, they don't experience pain. So they receive medications that uh, they don't sense anything that's going on and they're asleep during that time period. After the procedure is completed, the patient will go to the, emergency, uh, to the uh, recovery room. The pa patient will go to the recovery room and at that point uh, would wake up, drink some liquids to make sure that they're recovering fine, uh, be reunited with their family, and then go home afterwards. When we think about uh, the other time that you may have a problem would be afterwards. You could have a sore throat from the anesthesia itself or from the uh, endoscope going down. Um, you can have gas pains because some gas is placed in the intestine for a lot to allow us to look while we're in there. And uh, you may have a small amount of bleeding either uh, that you could spit up or have come out uh, in your stool because there have been uh, biopsies that were taken that it can have some bleeding associated with that. In general, it's a very safe procedure. Uh, the, the risk involved are bleeding and per infection and perforation and the risk of anesthesia, but overall it's a, a fairly commonly performed procedure that when done for the right reasons um, is uh, perfectly reasonable in, in what we do.